Welcome to my Lego Mindstorms EV3 tutorial part 3. We will be going over the flow control and we will do a small um, review on the action block. Um, so let's begin with the review. This right here will turn the, the medium motor, which is the smaller motor, of if you got if you have the starter pack, it's the small one. It, it comes in like a clear package. Um, this is off. It just the motor stays off. This is on. It infinitely um, stays on until either a loop uh, tells it not to, which we'll get into, etc. Or it some some reason turns off again, um, which is all advanced stuff. We'll have to get that to that later. This is on for seconds, which means exactly how it sounds like. It's on at the power, the speed it wants, that you choose right here for this many seconds. And then it's the exact same for the degrees and rotations. It, that's the same for this. And then this is the moving steering. So let's say I want to turn nine, uh, like a 360. You just type in 100. And that means 360. Um, the robot will turn that way if you're looking at it from the rear and um, it'll turn that direction but you have to designate it like how long you want to turn that direction so usually a 180 is like 3.1 or something similar to that, that rotation Just move uh, tank is exactly like move steering but it's moving forward how fast you want each motor to go um, and for how many rotations I'm going to do like 5. There, display. What the display looks like. Sound. The sound from the EV3 brick. And then uh, brick status light. What is exactly how it sounds like. So, we are the review done. Now we'll go into the flow control. This right here is the start button. All programs start off with the start um, block. The start block tells the program that whenever the program starts, do whatever's after the start. Um, uh, start part. So let's say I had this. That would mean that as soon as the program selected and activated on your EV3 brick, it does this. So yeah, it's kind of simple, but basically, if you didn't get any of that. Just do always connect your code to that start button. Never, never have it in limbo. Never have it like this. Not connected. If you want to connect that to that, but it's not beside each other, just simply click that. And your cursor will ch change like that. And that little thing should come out, and you just kind of connect it. Oh. And you have to do it to the left side. Just like that. And that's connected. That allows you to do multiple pieces of code with that. Or even if you want to do another start, which I would not recommend you do because there's no point to that. So, now we have um, two timers. I'll tell you what timers do. So, basically, timers will wait until something happens. So, if you want a time delay, like once you select it, it'll, uh, once it's started, It'll go to this, and you can have a timer um, or change. And then the timer, no. yeah, just like that. So has to be passed. Let's say, yeah, five seconds. So once that's done, then yeah, it does whatever was after that. So that's one way you can use it. Um, I'm gonna go to brick options. Oh, sorry, I'm just. So, right here, that means that the very center of your brick is pressed. Once that's pressed, and if it's if it's um, pressed, not bumped. Bumped is a different thing than released. Is a different thing. Once it's pressed, then it does whatever's after. So let's say if I want the program to wait 
until I press the center button, which this does right now. And if the center button is pressed, I go through with one large motor. Now it can be whatever you want, but I'm just picking this. And I'll just run infinitely. So, yeah, that's. Or if you want to have it so that you select a program and you want the whole tank to keep moving forward, you can just do that. Yeah, you can almost do almost anything. Um, if you have the infrared sensor and it's all hooked up to your uh, brick, um, you can have it so that it changes, uh, like it waits for the remote, uh, uh like a channel, or have it so that this. so that you can set like which buttons you use on the remote. You can have it so that you choose which port the infrared sensor is hooked up to. And on once that button, I have it hooked up on that top left button. Once that's pressed, then it does whatever codes after it. That's how you make, like, that's an example of a wireless communication is just using the infrared remote. Um, please remember that infrared might be re re represented as a IR. IR re representing infrared. Um, lots of programs use that. I think actually like a Weinstein's help might use that a couple times. Just so you don't get confused. Um, now we'll go to the loop. So when let's say I have the first button and I want it to turn turn let's say uh, right right and do an almost 180 you're an almost 180 once it's pressed you just upload that and it'll do that and like that'll only it'll only wait for it once because it's not a loop so once this is done it's done it doesn't check for it ever again which like means that if you hit the button again it, it just won't do it it won't turn because you're not saying to wait for it again once that's done once this move steering is done so in order to have it continually check for signals like that you have to have a loop which is this big thing right here and you just drag it in just like that and once this receives this command from this channel make sure it's the proper channel then it will turn it 180 then it'll go back to here it'll wait until it's pressed and then it'll do another 180 and it'll keep repeating and it's infinite uh, it's an infinite uh, loop. You can have it so that it's different options and how many times you want it. But right now, I'd recommend if you're checking for signals from the infrared, now you just use this. So uh, that's it for today. Um, thank you for viewing, and I hope this I didn't confuse you. Um, you might need to watch this a couple more times. It's, this is the this uh, flow controls pretty uh, confusing for the average person. So thank you.